Okay, so I thought that I could make a couple of videos going over the concepts that we're going to be talking about this week. Um, I think I'll be posting these videos to YouTube, so feel free to post your comments on the YouTube video so that other students can see, or you could uh, email me privately if it's something that you don't want other students to see. Uh, so let's just get into it. So this entire week we talked about buffers, titrations, PKs, calculating the PI, all these things. Um, I think I'm going to focus solely on buffers for this video, and then we'll go over the other concepts in other videos. But I thought that, um, yeah, let's just get right into this video, and then I'll uh, make other videos for the other concepts. So the question is that we're asking is, what is a buffer? And I think this is the definition that you're going to see on your study questions and online. And you, it says that a buffer is a solution that contains a weak acid, okay, and it's conjugate base A minus that is capable of resisting changes to your pH, and that's the key idea here behind buffers, that is capable of resisting changes to pH upon the addition of strong acid or strong base. Okay, so there's a lot of ideas here, and I thought I could break it down piece by piece. So we're saying that a buffer is a solution that contains an appreciable amount of weak acid in its conjugate base. I'll make a video later but to explain what I mean by appreciable, but the idea here is I wanna go over the idea of weak acid and conjugate base. So we denote that by saying that a weak acid is anything that's protonated form and then conjugate base is when we deprotonate that weak acid. So to give you examples to contextualize what I'm saying, so if I had a weak acid and conjugate base table, so if I gave you a carboxyl group, when we deprotonate that, that becomes a conjugate base. If I gave you NH3+, plus, when we deprotonate that, that becomes NH2. Um, and the idea here, again, is that there's a difference of a proton between the weak acid to go to the conjugate base. So we're losing a proton, and then we form the conjugate base. Okay. Another thing I want to say, and this is a common student misconception, is they see, as soon as they see a minus sign, they think that they have the conjugate base because this thing shows you a minus sign. But that is not always the case. You have to compare the two species that are being shown to you. So there's a study question that has this idea, and... It, so I'm going to just draw out all of them, but we have H3PO4. This is a polyprotic acid. Then we can form H2PO4 as its conjugate base. But because this can donate multiple protons, you can also have H2PO4 minus being your weak acid and HPO4 2 minus being your conjugate base. So notice how even though both of these have minus signs, that doesn't mean that they're both conjugate bases. The idea here is that you have to compare the protons of the weak acid is a conjugate base, and whichever one has one less proton is your conjugate base. The one that has the more protons is your weak acid. Okay, so going back to the definition of buffer, we said that it contains an appreciable amount of your weak acid and your conjugate base, and together the weak acid and conjugate base can resist changes to your pH when you add a strong acid or strong base. So this table kind of, and this is also from your study questions, kind of explains that idea, and I think it illustrates it quite nicely. So I'm showing adding a strong acid over here by the H3O plus and a strong base by the OH minus. So if I add a strong acid, notice how my conjugate base can react with it to form water and my weak acid, okay? So basically what's happening is the conjugate base takes a proton off the strong acid, okay? Or if I add a strong base, what the strong base can do is it can deprotonate the weak acid to form water and the conjugate base. So no matter if I add a strong acid or a strong base, what I'm effectively doing is uh, neutralizing the strong acid and strong base so that I can resist changes in pH, okay? The, the rest of the video is gonna go more into detail on this idea. So if you're still confused about it, please watch on. So before we get into the rest of the video, I thought that it would be helpful to go over the idea of why water is neutral, why we say water has a pH of seven, because I think it comes together quite nicely when you look at how buffers help the system. So we say that water is neutral because, again, this, we have the same amount of H3O plus ions and OH minus ions in solution. And you're going to say, well, how is water actually making the H3O plus and OH minus? Well, remember from our general chemistry classes, we have the auto ionization of water. That means that in any solution of water, and remember, in, water in solutions of water, we have millions and billions of water molecules. The water molecules are freely floating around and water can react with itself a very tiny amount to form a small amount of H3O plus 
and OH minus. So notice how, because we're forming the same amount of H3O plus and OH minus, we're saying that water is neutral. Now, this amount, as you can tell, it's kind of, it is very, very tiny. So what we do is we have the pH scale where we use the pH scale to identify exactly what this number means in a context that we can actually see and it's easier to visualize. So it might be hard to talk about 10 to the minus seven versus 10 to the minus eight because those are very, very tiny numbers. So plugging it into our pH formula, which is pH is equal to the negative log of H3O plus, we're saying that because we're forming 10 to the minus seven uh, amounts of H3O plus in any cup of water, we're gonna say that the pH is the negative log of those freely floating H3O plus ions in our solution. So the pH is going to be the negative log of 10 to the minus seven, which is pH equals seven. And the same thing would apply if you did the pOH. The pOH would be the, the negative log of the OH minus concentration. And because of this, we're gonna say that the pOH is also equal to seven. And that's again why we say water is neutral. So the idea of calculating the pH is again, we're measuring the amount of freely floating H3O plus ions in solution. So that means that we're gonna have a small amount of that from the auto ionization of water. Now, let's see what happens when we add a strong acid and strong base without buffers, okay? So seeing how it works without buffers, I think it'll help, under, it'll help us appreciate how buffers help the system work. So in the case A, we're gonna add a strong acid into our solution. Now, if I add a strong acid, remember, strong acids completely dissociate into their constituent ions of H plus and Cl minus, 100%, and that's the property of a strong acid. So if I added a strong acid, I'm effectively adding H plus ions into my solution. And the H plus ions that I'm gonna add into my solution, they're gonna react with freely floating water molecules to form H3O plus. So effectively, by adding strong acid, I'm increasing the concentration of H3O plus ions in my water solution. So by increasing my H3O plus ions, I am decreasing my pH. And this makes sense because when we say that we're adding an acid into our solution, we're gonna make it more acidic and decrease the pH. Now, let's see how that works for adding a strong base. So now in this case, we're adding NaOH. I just use that as an example. When you add NaOH into your solution, what happens is again, the NaOH dissociates into its constituent ions. So we're effectively adding OH minus ions into our solutions. So let me draw that out over here. Okay, so in this case, we know just from like our general chemistry classes, if I add a base into my solution, I'm going to increase my pH. But how exactly does that work? Well, this works, Again, because remember that, remember that water auto ionizes to form a small amount of H3O plus, and that's where we got our pH. But when I add NaOH, the OH minus will react with those freely floating H3O plus molecules to neutralize it and form water. So thereby, I'm effectively decreasing the concentration of freely floating H3O plus ions. And because I'm decreasing the concentration of H3O plus ions, I'm going to increase the pH. Okay, so to resummarize, when I add a strong acid or a strong base without a buffer, what's happening is I'm effectively changing the concentration of the H3O plus ions. If I add a strong acid, I'm gonna increase the concentration of H3O plus ions. If I add a strong base, I'm going to decrease the concentration of H3O plus ions. And this is why I see my pH greatly changing upon the, when I add a strong acid or a strong base. So now let's see what happens when I add a buffer into my system. And I kind of redrew my water cup over here. Notice again, we have the water molecules, the small amounts of H3O plus, and the OH minus from the auto ionization of water. And then I also, in this case, I'm gonna add my buffering system, which is denoted in red. HA is going to be my weak acid again. And again, A minus is going to be my conjugate base. So now let's see what happens if I add a strong acid. Okay, so in this case, Again, adding strong acid, it's gonna dissociate, so I'm effectively adding H plus. And notice how the H plus in this case, instead of reacting with, notice how in the previous case, when we add a strong acid, it reacted with the water to form more H3O plus, and that's why my pH decreased. In this case, I'm adding the H plus, and instead of reacting with water, it's reacting with the conjugate base to form more of my weak acid. So effectively, 
because I'm not changing the concentration of my H3O plus ions in my solution, because I'm not changing the concentration of freely floating H3O plus ions in my solution, my pH is relatively not going to change, and that's why my pH stays similar, okay? Similarly, now let's try our other case where we're going to add strong base. So in this case, we're now going to add strong base, and I'm going to put it over here like this. I'm going to add strong base, and because, notice how in this case, the OH minus, it's going to react with the weak acid, to form water and the conjugate base. So remember in the previous case B, when we added OH minus, I effectively, I was reacting with the H3O plus to decrease the concentration of H3O plus, and that's why the pH increased. In this case, notice how the OH minus reacts with the weak acid instead of water, or it reacts with the weak acid instead of the H3O plus ions, and that's why my pH, again in this case, will stay similar, and that's why my pH is not gonna change. So again, to re-summarize what I'm saying in this case, when we have a buffering system, notice how no matter if I add a strong acid or a strong base, no matter if I add either or, my weak acid or my conjugate base is there to neutralize that strong acid or strong base so that I can keep the concentration of freely, H, freely floating H3O plus ions in my solution relatively the same. And because I'm keeping that concentration relatively the same, the pH stays similar in both cases and again, this is the whole point of the buffer. Remember, if we go back to our definition of buffers, we said that buffers contain the weak acid conjugate base, and they're capable of resisting changes to pH. 